Uh, well, right. we already did um, our introductions, so I guess we can skip those two slides. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I'll just give a bit of a, a context for our presentation um, today. So we will start, we'll talk about Azure Cognitive Search, um, we'll give a bit of an overview around it, explaining what it is, uh, capabilities and benefits of using it, with a special focus on the, the AI elements. Um, then afterwards, like we'll do a demo, we'll show how to use the service, how we can apply the AI capabilities to it, and how to query the service, like both in using the, the Azure portal and, and some codes. Then at the end of it, uh, we'll wrap this up and try to answer any any sort of questions. Anything you want to add, Hugo? Uh, no, you basically said everything. Let's proceed with the introduction. We don't have so much time, to be honest. And yeah, uh, yeah we move from there. Um, yeah. So can I go for a intro first? Yeah. Can you just move the slide, please? Yeah. Fast. Yeah, perfect. So hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are uh, watching us. Uh, my name is Hugo Barona. Uh, I'm a cloud solutions architect um, based in Dublin, Ireland. And most of my experience is related with uh, development and design of uh, solutions using uh, Microsoft Tech technologies while leveraging, of course, the open source related technologies. Also, I am a put outside author. I some when I have some free time, I usually deliver some course there related to Microsoft technologies and the public speaker and uh, tech um, community contributor actively contributing for the cloud one channel one. So if you don't know, you can have a look to our website www.cloudonechannel1.com. And that's me. Okay. So, like as for me, similar to um, what Hugo was saying, um, also working as a solutions architect for based in Dublin for a large consultancy. Um, we're working on IT for more than ten years now, and my background is mostly with all software development and architecture at, at this stage. I'm also part of, as, of the cloud which is an initiative that Hugo, Hugo mentioned. So yeah, if we just take a look, so. Let's just then move on to the presentation then. So what is Azure Cognitive Search? Um, search is like is a search as a service cloud solution uh, that gives developers APIs and tools to search enable websites and other systems. Like it offers a search engine for full text search, easy integration with other Azure services, and AI-based enrichments that provide insights on all types of content. So when we think about search services architecturally, right, it, it's something that sits between like our, our data stores that contain unindexed data and our client applications that then in turn send query requests to this type of service and handle the report and handle the response. The, what this does is this provides our applications with a very powerful and fast query engine that can, can retrieve massive amounts of data as fast as possible. So there are four main components to Azure Cognitive Search. We have data sources. So it's our containers of data that we want to search. This can be either blob storage containers, tables in SQL, or documents in Cosmos DB. We have um, indexes. These are a collection of searchable JSON documents that are extracted from our data source, sources that we can like retrieve, filter, and perform sorting operations. We have indexers, the engine that drives like the overall indexing process. So it, it extracts data and meta metadata values from the original data source and maps them to fields in the index. An indexer automatically runs when it's created, but can also be scheduled to run at regular intervals or run on demand to add more documents to the index. And then we have skill sets. This is a capability of Azure Cognitive Search that enables us to apply AI as a collection of cognitive skills uh, as part of the indexing process, which, which in turn will map the outputs of those skills to fields in the index document. In, in, in skill sets, we're able to use two types of skills. So we have built-in and then custom. 
built in are the types of skills that you find in Azure Cognitive Services. Uh, so we're talking about figuring out the language of the document, uh, sentiment analysis, or key phrases uh, that you can extract and find people mentally in the context, for example. Well, custom skills might be, for example, you know, document classifiers that target a specific domain, like finance, scientific, scientific publications, or, or medicine. So moving on to the, the capabilities of the Azure Cognitive Search Service. We, we covered data sources already, uh, but just to give you a bit more detail, currently the search service supports Azure Blobs, Azure Data Lake, Azure SQL, Table Storage, and Cosmos DB. And now it has, um, it uses also as well managed, managed identities. So we can actually connect to these sort of data sources in a, in a secure way, avoiding the use of connection strings. The full, full text search capability of the service is built on top of like Apache Lucene. It's an open source search, search engine. This engine uses a specialized query format and it's really powerful. So, and with it, we can do like wildcard, fuzzy searches, proximity search, or regular expressions. We have suggestions, which are properties that we can apply to the fields of the index that support matches or partial terms. And this is how we enable uh, type aheads or search as a type functionality in your applications. We have synonyms, which is an asset we can create to expand the scope of our query without having to provide a term. So think about mapping the word dog to canine or puppy. And as mentioned before, um, the, um, the use of skill sets and, and skills is what gives like, the, um, the service an AI powered search. Just a bit here, sorry. It is uh, multilingual, multilingual, so you can re retrieve results from the index in the user's own, own language. And lastly, it has support for geospatial queries. So if, if the index has geospatial data in it, it is possible to retrieve like, the distance between two points or if a point is in a polygon. And all of that um, is possible by using these functions in the query syntax. So over to you, Hugo. Yeah, I think uh, we just need Priyanka to just enable my screen, please, my screen share. Perfect. So uh, one important part of your Azure search solution is the processing and indexing of your data. So typically you have your data located somewhere uh, on Azure and uh, definitely you want to import that data to Azure search. So then you can provide that data to your websites, web apps and mobile apps and so on. So typically uh, you have two models that you can use uh, to index the data. So you have the pull model and you have the push model. Typically on the pool model scenario, you can use the indexer feature available on Azure Search. An indexer is basically a crawler that extracts the data from an external Azure data source and populates your search index using field mappings to map source and destination fields. Also, you can use uh, skill sets to transform and enhance your data. So during the data indexing using indexers, uh, you can leverage cognitive skills to enrich the data and then save the data into your search index. The push model, you can use different components, including Azure Functions uh, or even Logic Apps to push your data um, based on square schedule or even on demands, or even if uh, a given event happens. As an example, uh, in one of the clients I work with, uh, we are using a third party data source uh, so consequently, since it's not supported uh, this source on the indexer feature, we basically decided to create a logic app that would receive the content updates and uh, notifications from the source uh, via webhooks. And then it would process those uh, notifications and would perform, be responsible to perform uh, conversion tasks to convert the data from uh, uh, the original format to the search format. And then it would use the Azure Search uh, REST API to just push the data. 
So in this scenario, you can have, uh, using the push model, you can have a real-time flow that you can uh, just subscribe to the notifications and kick off your workflows using Logic Apps. And then, or even Azure, you could use Azure Durable Functions if you want. And then basically push those content updates into your Azure search and feature those content updates on your uh, web applications in real time. Um, yeah, so hopefully in the near future, the Azure search team will extend the support of the indexer uh, to support more data source, uh, be, including third party data source, because uh, definitely it would be easier uh, to index data from those source, uh, uh, source without uh, the need to create uh, these custom extra components that I mentioned um, to support your indexing uh, process. Let me just move to the next slides. Um, so when leveraging the skill sets and the skills to enhance your data, you can apply different types of transformations and enhancements in your data. So you have the built-in, as João mentioned, you have the built-in of skills uh, available to perform common operations with your data, including simple data transformations as aggregations, uh, calculations, or even concatenations, or more advanced using cognitive skills to analyze sentiment of your data, translate text from one, one given language to another language, extract key phrases from your data, or even perform optical character recognition and more. But uh, also this feature provides you flexibility as Priyanka mentioned, and that in this case, if you don't find um, a proper built-in skill available, uh, to use in your scenario, you can always uh, consider to create custom skills uh, where you can basically call, as an example, a machine learning model that you uh, trained to perform predictions, or even uh, call a custom web API or even Azure functions to run some custom logic and return the, the results that you are expecting essentially. Okay, so then you can enhance your data uh, in the way you need. And then you can group those uh, skills, of course, in individual skill sets and connect your skill sets with your indexer. So then when your, when your indexer runs, it can use the skill sets to just enhance the data um, during indexing time and then save the outputs. And yeah, I'm just giving you some high level details here uh, so you, are, you can understand how useful are these features. You will get uh, more details during the demo, and of course, you can always refer back to the to the resource that we will share with you. So then you can get more full details about what is available to you. So uh, in these slides, I just want to share with you um, the high level process to create your pipelines uh, to enrich your content uh, using AI and artificial intelligence. So you start by, of course, configuring your uh, data source. Uh, this data source at the moment need to be one of the supported uh, Azure data source, uh, including the Azure storage, Azure SQL database, or even uh, the Cosmos DB. Once you have your data source uh, configured, the next step is creating and configuring your uh, skill sets to transform and enhance your content. So you have uh, several uh, types of skill sets available, including the text skills, and vision skills using cognitive service uh, on the back end and AI to perform operations with your text and image video contents. Once you have your skills created, um, then it's time to create your indexers, uh, configure the field mappings to map your source and destination fields, and also configure the cognitive skills to use and also, in case you, you decide to use knowledge stores, I will explain you in, during the demo, uh, you can also configure your knowledge stores as well. And the last step, of course, is ensuring that you configure the output uh, field mappings during the indexers configuration, uh, just to basically uh, store the output in your, uh, persist the data in your, uh, in your search index and even the knowledge stores that you configure. So now, OK, in terms of benefits and use case, of course, there are plenty of benefits uh, of using this service. Uh, I'm just going to highlight a few. Uh, of course, these benefits will depend on your scenario. 
some of these that I mentioned may not apply. Some of the uh, um, other benefits that may apply in your scenario are not included here. But essentially, the most important thing is try to assess how these uh, studies can help you um, build uh, seamlessly uh, search capabilities into your web applications and also leverage the cognitive service and AI available on Azure uh, by the pre-trained models to basically enhance uh, your, your contents that you are sharing in your applications. So, of course, the, the first benefit is the, the, how easy it is to implement. Of course, you can leverage Azure portal to implement your search solution. Also, uh, it provides you REST APIs that you can use in your applications or even you can use uh, to, on your test environments using, as an example, Postman. And also, you have the SDKs. So in case you, you want to abstract from the implementation of the, the, the search REST API, you can always use the SDK on your application uh, with your favorite language. And you just install the package and you just interact with your search index using the SDK. Of course, it provides you a easy integration with Azure data so uh, stores. Uh, as you will see in the demo, uh, it's pretty simple. As long as you don't really worry that you need to, to have is uh, you just need to ensure that you have your uh, data available in your Azure, in a supported Azure data source, and that's it. Pretty much, then you can configure your uh, um, data source in the Azure Search Index and uh, use it. Of course, it's a managed service. It gives you a lot of abstraction from servers running this service and all the stuff. So, and we have uh, many uh, options and features available, including the uh, the possibility to easily scale uh, your service according to the demands and consequently uh, design a cost-effective solution. And it provides you all the search-related uh, features out of the box. So Yep supports uh, Azure Search supports uh, all data syntax, so you can um, use all data to, to basically perform your queries and quickly um, provide your, those features in your web, web, web apps and websites without uh, being required to just implement those features in your web applications, you know what I mean? And of course, you have uh, as well support for complex search scenarios, including when you need uh, uh, to assess linguistic or even custom text analysis, or even transform raw data into searchable data. We will see during the demo uh, all of these in, in play. So now I'm just going to share with you my screen. Joao, you can see the screen, right? Let me just confirm. Yeah, all's good. OK. So the first thing I'm going to do is just share with you the, the scenario. Of course, we had to prepare a few uh, components here uh, to just reduce the amount of time we spent uh, during the demo. So we have, essentially, we have a cognitive service uh, that we had to create, of course, to um, just perform all the AI enrichment that we are going to use, okay? So this cognitive service, once you create it, um, as far as I, uh, if I'm not wrong, you have a free tier available, so you can give it a try on your Azure subscription. Even if you don't have Azure subscription, you can create a trial account and to try by yourself for 30 days, if I'm not wrong. And uh, for free, you can test this service. And uh, once you, you create the cognitive service, of course, you need to create your search service. And once you create your search service, then you just need to connect, as we are going to show you, uh, in order to uh, perform the AI enrichment in your contents. So let me just open here the search service. I'm going to maybe zoom in a bit this. OK. So at the moment, uh, I'm just going to do one thing, because actually, this is not clean. So I'm going to just clean this. OK, so at the moment, we have a, a search service empty. And essentially, we want to create uh, one search index, right, to receive our uh, the data index, the data of our data source, and then um, essentially enrich with the AI capabilities to just um, in us our data. So before I proceed to this, just to explain you what, in terms of data source, what we have, we just created a storage account. And in this storage account, of course, we have a blob container 
with uh, inside with a dated Bob container and we have an OTL data, okay? So let me just show you here. This, <coughs> essentially this uh, OTL data contains reviews uh, of clients for a given OTL, okay? So you, you have uh, the address of the OTL, you have countries, cities, names, you have uh, also the reviews text with the text that the customer just wrote sorry and some extra fields that you have here in the data sets okay so the idea will be let's consume this uh, data source and then uh, let's index the data and enhance the data with uh, the AI capabilities provided by the cognitive uh, service so what i'm going to start by accessing the search service and in order to show you how simple it is, as I mentioned, so you can easily uh, build um, your uh, search solutions using uh, uh, different uh, different ways, including the REST API with some automation, with some scripts, or even with the SDK, you can build a quick application that will create your index based on a definition and so on. Uh, just for the simplicity, I'm going to show you how to do this by the by the using the Azure port. So we start by importing the data, right? So this feature allows you to basically, in an interactive uh, graphical user interface way, uh, use um, import your data and uh, configure the index, okay? So we are going to select our type of data source, in this case, uh, Azure Bob Storage. We are going to just choose one of the storage accounts available. In this case, it's the storage account that I just show you. And I'm going to just give it a name, hotel reviews, okay? So in here, it's important to just select the parsing mode depending on the data source. In this case, we are using uh, CSV, so we are going to select the limited text, and we are going to say, yes, uh, it contains the header as the first row. And uh, the connection string is all filled in, so we are good to proceed, okay? So the next step, is basically ab about attaching first. We need to attach the cognitive service um, a, a sub instance that you want to use. In this case, I'm going to use the one that we created, and then I'm going to just configure the enrichments. On the enrichments, uh, the first thing we need to select is what is the source of data field that you want to, con to consider to your enrichments. In this case, I'm going to select, uh, select of course, the uh, reviews text, okay? Because we want to uh, basically use the review that the customer provided to uh, try to identify a few things. Keywords, um, also identify the language, identify the sentiments, and so on. So we just select the, 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 the fields, and one important detail is if I show you this, when, when it comes to the enrichment granularity level, depending on the level that you select, you may have uh, certain cognitive skills available or not, okay? So as you can see from this, we have here already extract people names, extract organization names, location names, key phrases, detect the language and translate text. You can select the, the language and also identify any personal uh, inf information in, your, in the contents. But if I select these to be to be considered as uh, pages, right? So it will just divide the text by pages with a limit of 5,000 characters. Then you can see that the, the text sentiment is um, available because this is because the, the text sentiment has a limitation in terms of the request for 5,000, uh, currently for 5,000 uh, characters or less. So I'm going to just select all these skills and I'm going to unselect the detect sentiment. The, the idea is we are going to create this um, enrichment via the, uh, this import data feature, but then I will show you the last step, how you can actually create manually your um, cognitive skill, in this case, uh, to detect the sentiment, okay? So you just select the enrichments that you want, and then you, you can also specify where you want to save the enrichments to a knowledge store. In this case, I'm going to just say, okay, I'm going to uh, save the blob projections, and I'm going to, again, choose an existing connection, select your storage accounts. In this case, I'm going to select the data container, and here I'm going to 
just change the name to projections, okay? So we want in a separate container to put our uh, projections. So we are all good uh, with the configuration. It's time to proceed to the next step. So on the next step, you basically are configuring and defining your index, okay? So it's important that, uh, as you can see, it, uh, it automatically detected the fields from the header, detected the fields in our data source, right? So now you need to configure uh, um, how, which, which capabilities you want to provide to, do, to, to each one of the fields on your data source, okay? So of course, you can say, if you want to retrieve the field from the, the, your search queries, then you need to set the, the field as retrievable. If you want to use the, the field in, a, in the filters in your queries, then you need to set the field as filterable. If you want to use a, in the sort queries, you need to set as sortable. Faceable, Jean will show you what it means, but essentially when you uh, enable the field, a uh, given field to be faceable, then uh, you have built in the capability to just um, create uh, filters, right? To enable the user to just filter for for the different values available, um, just uh, enable those filters and perform the queries to the data. And then, of course, the searchable is for your uh, free text search uh, queries. So, in case you want to use a given field, you need to enable as well. So, in this case, I'm going to say that all is uh, retrievable and filterable, sortable. Let's just say that uh, we are going to provide sort by date and may maybe by rating. And uh, faceable, we are going to say, okay, I'm going to um, enable to uh, the user to filter by city, by country, and uh, maybe by language. Language here. And of course, the, the rating as well. So you can see the, which one is the top ratings reviews. And, the, and then the searchable, we are going to say, okay, let's provide the name. Again, the text and the title, okay? So this will basically, this configuration will support, define your index and also support the capabilities uh, of your search in instance, okay? So once you have uh, everything configured, you are good to go. So let's create the indexer. Hopefully it will not <laughs> cause any problems. <laughs> so uh, here, the last step is basically on your indexer to, uh, so you, you are able to just configure the schedule uh, of your indexer, okay? You can con configure if it's once, hourly, daily, or even custom. And then you have advanced options that you can configure. In our scenario, we don't need that, to be honest. So you just submit and you just create it. You can see how simple it is and quick, okay? So of course, you can see straight that um, it created a skill set, right? And once you open the skill set, you can see the definition of the skill set. You can see you have an array with all the different skills that it's using. You can see there is a split skill here, and then an entity recognition skill, executing, key phrase extraction skill, and so on. I will show you more details uh, later on on this. And also, if we go back to the to the to the search instance, so you have the data source configured, of course. Uh, in this case, the blob storage that we are using. You have an indexer created, and you have your index. Okay. So as you can see, if I go to the index, if I search, I have already the content here. Okay. So I have a, a, a set of fields that are coming from my data source. Sorry, Jesus, the the the, the scroll is too quick. Okay, so I have a set of uh, fields that are coming from our data source. Then I have a set of uh, fields that are me me metadata. You can enable or disable the creation of these metadata. And then we have here a set of uh, fields related to our um, enrichments. As you can see, key phrases, it's detecting the language, and it's also translating and masking the, 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 the text, okay? so. We have our uh, Azure search, um, uh, our search index created, but we still have a few problems to 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 fix. So if we go to our indexer, right? We just open our indexer, and you can see, okay, it ran once and it succeeded, okay. Uh, but as you can see here, there are some warnings here, okay. So we need to fix these warnings. So what we are going to do? We are basically going to open the the run, right? And we are going to 
see the details here about the warnings, okay? But in case you are, it's not clear to you, you can see here that the operation was the shaper skill, okay? But in case these messages are not clear to you what's the problem about, then you can always click in the problem, right? And say debug this error warning, okay? So once you click the debug, you basically are going to use the debugger to basically in a session to basically uh, uh, help you uh, debug and fix the problem. So that is exactly what we are going to do. Sorry. Uh, so we are going to just configure here a connection. We are just going to choose the existing um, the existing uh, storage accounts just to configure the connection, and we are going to save the session. Okay. So once you save the session, you can see this graphic. Okay, this graph that shows you. Let me just, yeah. That shows you the sequence. Maybe I need to just zoom out a bit, yeah. Shows you the sequence of the skills that is uh, executing. So you can see you, your docu document comes, then perform some field mappings, then is uh, running the skill to language detection, then it's running the split. Once it runs the split, right, then it runs a set of uh, uh, skills, uh, including the entity recognition, key phrase, and so on. And then you have the final one, the shaper. And as you can see, there is a warning here, OK? If you click the, the skill, you can see the structure of the information. And also, you can see here the error message and, or the warning in this case. From the warning, you can see here that there is a message saying uh, that there is a missing value on your documents, maybe let me just, there is no, no ability to zoom, uh, yeah. So it's basically saying, okay, there is a missing value uh, on your documents reviews. Maybe I need to zoom out in order to show you. Yeah. So there is missing values on your, on your uh, uh, when processing the pages of your reviews text. So what I'm saying is since we selected the granularity to be pages, that means the, the enrichment is dividing your reviews text, a uh, full text, into pages of a uh, limit of 5,000 characters. And then it's basically uh, enhancing the, that, that content, OK, for each one of the pages. And as you can see, for each one of the, the pages, uh, there is the entities uh, array. And inside the entities, is trying to look for subtype and also Wikipedia URL and so on. And it's missing those values. So what we need to actually do is, if you go to the sorry, if you go to the skill settings, we can see here that we have our pages, right? And then from the pages we have our entities, and we can see that we have these fields: entity, entity type, entity subtype, and URL. But we don't have actually Wikipedia URL and so on. Okay, so it's a, a current problem in terms of the indexing. So what we need to do? We go to the skill JSON editor. We just find out where is uh, basically processing the entities. As you can see, it's names and then it as inputs, and then it contains the entities, and the entities contains inputs as well. So as you can see, each one of them contains here the uh, for slash name and for slash type. So we just need to remove in this scenario, remove these fields because it's they are invalid. Okay, uh, they are non-existing fields and once you remove those fields, you just need to save, OK? And really good, I don't have authorization. <laughs> OK, so it looks like it's not giving me authorization to do that. That's really nice. So let's try again uh, in a different way. Yeah, it looks like some some random problem here. But what you can do is, if by any reason, I tried a few times this debug session and it was working. I don't know what's going on, to be honest. But you can always go to the, your skill sets. Well, actually, I have my. Yeah, it looks like I'm. Mm, you don't have access. OK, let me just close this and try. So it looks like we are getting, yeah, I'm getting authorization fields on the 
accessing the search at all. That's not good. <laughs> um, not sure what you did. I'm seeing the same. Eh? I'm seeing the exact same thing. Yes, exactly. So, uh, all right, fair enough. Let's try to just uh, do one thing. Let's try to just, I don't think it, that's the story, but I believe uh, this may be. Yeah, I'm getting exactly the same thing. Let me try to go anonymous just for, we are a bit short in time, sorry about that. Uh, okay. Let me just get here. I'm going to just try to connect anonymous just to ensure that it's no problem with and I need to just approve here the requests. Really nice. <laughs> it always happens. <laughs> it always happens like this. So let's see if in Anonymous it works. No, it's definitely there is a problem here. Okay, I'm going to just create this uh, from the scratch quickly. Uh, I'm just going to create a new resource quickly. Okay, sorry guys. So let's you try to. You will be you. We can see you. Yeah, I, I know. Uh, just one sec, please. Can you see now? Yes, perfect, perfect. Perfect, sorry. Uh, we are facing a few issues here in relation with authorization, but let's try again. Let's just create here the instance. It's actually good because you can see here quickly uh, things from the scratch, how things work. Let me just... So it's basically just creating the search instance. Again, I'm just creating the search instance from the scratch. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I was not expecting. We tried this a few times and it was not happening. So yeah, definitely I'm getting an authorization token for failed validation. Okay, I'm going to change uh, to, I'm just going to create a resource group here. Maybe the subscription, okay? So let's see. I'm going to just fit to another subscription and okay i just go to the resource group again search service azure cognitive search we just create the instance and we just say three north europe Okay, we just create the search. Let's see if, if this one allows to do the operations. Yeah, no, I'm getting completely the, the, there. So it looks like it's a, a problem with the subscription. But uh, it's really odd. Can you uh, can you try? Let me just try to just ensure that it's not uh, something related with uh, Azure Portal in this case. Let me just see. Yeah, it's something with Azure Portal. Okay. Uh, to be honest, it's happening for a uh, uh, João. Are you there? Yeah. 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 Just to be one hundred percent sure, Kerry, can you open your uh, your uh, company tenants and uh, and try to open any uh, any resource Azure Search or something? We are uh, apparently there, we are facing some problems in the in the in the portal <laughs> during live. Really nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to open my own subscriptions just to see what's happening there. 
Yes, yeah, so apparently it's it's not something related with my subscriptions, neither the the the, the search, uh, and it's, it's it's actually it's actually a, a big problem because it's it's stopping us from basically proceed with the with the rest of the of the demo. Um, Can you see it there? Just gonna try to create a simple search service. For the people attending, sorry about that. Uh, it's something really unpredictable on yeah. our side. So the the second part of the demo would be how to query the index, right? <laughs> um, where we would show. Do you want the... to share your screen, John? Um, uh, no, yeah, but that's... just to be sure, just to be sure, you are facing the same problems on your uh, work account, right? Yeah. On Azure, yeah, yeah, yeah. So apparently it's a, a, a problem that we are facing on, on Azure, not related with my my subscription or even with our resource. Apparently it's a, it's a problem. Uh, well, I'm not, I'm not saying that it's global, but uh, uh, myself and João and other people are, apparently are facing the same. And I'm facing in, in different accounts. In my work account, I have exactly the same problem. But yeah, just to quickly, explain to you what i was trying to uh, to do is there is no be uh, there is no complexity on this uh, once you have the, your data source we can provide you the data source afterwards and you can try by yourself you can create your search instance using the free tier then you just import the data and you enable all the different enrichment as i did you do all the configurations on your index and definition and then you just once you finish the configuration you have your indexing running you have your, your index created and your data, okay? The last step that I was trying to, to, to show you was to basically create manually the, uh, the skill, okay? In this case, we would create a skill to just detect the sentiments and uh, in, the, in the review and just to create, define if the sentiment is positive or negative. You will receive, if you use this skill, you will receive, um, a flow, uh, well, uh, um, a numeric uh, value uh, between zero and one, where uh, one uh, stands for uh, really positive and zero uh, stands for really negative um, uh, sentiments. So then, uh, essentially, once you once you create your uh, skill on your skill sets, then the only thing you need to do is you go to your indexer, you just reset the indexer because. Remember, the indexer will be um, consuming a change feeds in order to understand which documents it already imported and which ones did not import. Once um, you you reset your uh, indexer, you just run and you should be able to see then your uh, your new fields uh, created and populated. Of course, the sentiments you need to store the sentiment in your index. So that means you need also before running the indexer, you need to also to go to the, your index and create the new field. So in this case, you just create a sentiment field with a type of a collection of double because your uh, review, um, so the field review text, it's paginated when it goes to be used for your uh, cognitive skill. So that means it will return you not one single score, but uh, uh, an array of scores, a list of scores, okay? So then you just, a collection of scores. So then you just store it in your fields and then you have everything ready. João, uh, yeah. Well, I'm not, not going to be able to run this, but maybe it's worth just switching a bit to my screen. Maybe you just show the source code. Uh, Priyank, yeah. can you just enable uh, João's uh, screen, please? Yeah, yeah. thank you. So, to use the actual index, we have a couple of ways, right? We can go to the Azure portal and Microsoft like facilitates um, things quite a lot here, which gives us like an interface for us to query index straight away, try a couple of searches uh, and see the results. Like in an ideal scenario, I would be showing you the, the, the documents and <clears throat> the outcomes of the AI enrichment. So you would see things like the language, um, all of the review text and some, you know, personal identification identified, and and the fields with 
those kind of details mask, for example. So if, if, the, if the review text has people's names, you, you would have a version of it where that's kind of like anonymized, right? And the same with the sentiment that we were talking about where you would get a, a rating between zero and one where less than 0 0.5 would be unhappy and more than that would be sorry to get hacked. Um, <clears throat> the portal gives an extra piece of functionality that, that's also useful when you're testing out the index and then searching it, which gives you a um, capability to create or download an HTML file, which gives you a demo app straight away that you can query the index. So in with like a, a search box at the top, and then on the left, you have a different option. So categories uh, that you specify in the index creation. So those like face table um, properties that Google was mentioning. So if you if you tick those boxes once you created that MLX, you'll see the UI elements in the left. So what it means is it allows that filtering on the results. And if our app provides those UI controls for, for that, 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 that kind of search, right? The Azure search gives us the data structure to back that experience. So that's basically how the face table works. Um, but since we don't have that demo app to show, using the Azure Search SDK is also quite straightforward. You just need to download, this, it's, more, it's mostly this one here. So if you use this SDK, you instantiate your search client here, right? And the only thing you need to do is to pass on the service endpoint, the index name, and the credential. So you see that I have the search name, the, the key to query it. Now, this is only the query key. We also have admin keys. Those are for admin related operations. So you can control the Azure search service through REST API calls as well. If you wanna you know, trigger the indexer again, create a new index, all that kind of stuff can be done programmatically. In this case, we're just doing a query, right? So after specifying everything here, we create our options object. In this case, I'm applying a filter. So I'm re I, I want ratings that are greater than two, and I'm gonna order that in a descending manner. Or in this particular one here, I could just bring all the results and then something else. And the, the, the remainder of the code is just mapping out those kind of fields to, to objects. So I do have my DTO here for the hotel. I map it out to the results that come from the search endpoint. I run it. And then here it's where I'm displaying it in the console application. So um, that's kind of like just just one one uh, one one brain check guys uh, a new stream starts at uh, you know in about 7 minutes from now so i'll appreciate if you can end it in the next 5 minutes that's that was it priyanka so <laughs> perfect <laughs> just, priyanka just to 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 be sure about this because definitely see i think it's a bit uh, unfair to us uh, uh, this kind of situation happening at, at the moment but sure. uh, if you have if you have an Azure account, uh, you can give uh, give a uh, uh, check on your site. I don't know if it's a problem related to the North Europe uh, region, but definitely apparently it's it's a problem that some people are facing at the moment in terms of the authorization. Uh, so yeah, I'm uh, I'm I'm sorry about that. We we could not complete the demo, uh, but yeah, I hope that uh, we have another opportunity to show you how easy it is to use the uh, AI enrichment. Yeah, absolutely, guys. So, you know, there are a lot of, you know, global AI communities are always uh, hosting events, conducting events. So it should not be a problem. We'll invite you again. We have uh, AI nights in Singapore. So surely no issues. This, 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 this is totally unfortunate and it happens a lot of time, you know. So even during my demo, suddenly uh, the model file decided not to download. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you know, it was a last minute 
uh, thing but they totally understand we all we are all uh, we have all been there sometime or the other so absolutely you know take heart from the fact that you were able to show most of the things earlier and only at the last juncture it sort of uh, you know backfired no no worries uh, so i uh, just one question for you how many custom skill sets are possible at once how uh, how many you add to the search index well that's a good that's a, actually a good question i'm not, to be honest i'm not uh, i'm not aware of uh, of uh, i don't know in top of my head the limitations but i know there are some limitations as you can as you can imagine right uh, but uh, i would say always what i would do in those scenarios is always check against the documentation the microsoft documentation because those limitations can change you know so um yeah but definitely there are some limitations in terms of the number of skills that you can run because otherwise your pipeline potentially would never finish you know <laughs> okay um yeah but uh, yeah uh, see i would say as you can see uh, and a uh, quick uh, in during our demo we gave just a quick example that's uh, a real um really a lot of times the common uh, things that you need to 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 do such as uh, uh, performing well uh, analyzing your text that was what essentially we were doing there uh, we did not show you actually the vision or analyzing image and uh, uh, video because we actually don't have uh, in our data source we don't have image or video but also uh, the the image and video uh, or the vision skills you can pretty much enable in the same way but uh, most of the the scenarios that you need to to when you need to detect sentiments or you need to process an image to identify people or even um uh, extract key phrases from uh, and identities and locations from your text you can do everything uh, built in by default and that's the amazing so you don't actually need as you can imagine priyanka uh it's pretty uh well nowadays it's becoming easier but it's it's a bit uh, there is a uh, significant effort when it comes to build your machine learning models train your models test your models deploy in order to make them um, available to 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 perform predictions so yeah uh, of course nowadays with the automated ml uh, things are becoming easier but uh, yeah still um, yeah still if you have i would say if you have built in uh, the skills available just use the built in skills if definitely uh, uh, none of the built in skills fit in your scenario and serve for your purpose then you can potentially consider create custom solutions uh, to to perform your uh, enrichment all right okay thank you guys uh, thank you so much and you know we hope to see you soon uh, on on some of our uh, ai nights forums and have a good day thank you so much thank you for having thank us thank you so much priyanka uh, take care and uh, thank you everyone uh, for attending this session and sorry for the for the issue <laughs> <laughs> it was <laughs>